Hey, it's Hub, and welcome to Video of the Damned, exclusively on the Morbidly Beautiful Network. It's been an interesting couple weeks for the show. I've had some trailer reactions, gotten a lot of views on those, I'm happy to say. But also, I inadvertently started a wrestling discourse. Uh, the explanation is on my personal channel, just, you know, at Bertie Hubbard, but I tweeted from the Video of the Damned account, at Video of the Damned, about a promo from All Elite Wrestling by a wrestler named John Moxley, uh, very much resembling, if not identical, to a scene in 1992 Australian cult classic, Romper Stomper. And some wrestling commentators got a hold of that, talked about it on their shows, People tweeted about their commentary, and it became a little bit of a thing. Um, you can go check that out if you would like. If you're not interested in wrestling or 1992 Australian cult classics, it's okay. Although I did write a really good essay for Drunk Monkeys at drunkmonkeys.us about Romper Stomper. I'm really proud of it. It's, I think, the definitive essay about the movie, the soundtrack, and the spin-off series from a couple of years ago. So check that out. Just big thanks to Brian Alvarez, Mike Sepervivi, Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Last, Jim Cornette, and the Jim Cornette Experience, Web is Jericho, um, everybody else who has covered this story and mentioned Video of the Damned in the process somehow. Speaking of great 90s films, or at least uh, really divisive cult classics, uh, Harmony Corinne did a movie called Gummo, and there's a wonderful essay uh, by Ben Woodowis, who directed one of my favorite films, Benny Loves Killing. Uh, ben talks about Generation X, outsider art, representation of subcultures, and weirdos on film. Uh, lots of good stuff in this 12 minutes that uh, uses Gummo as kind of the entry way into a piece about all that. So check that out. It's a great, great essay if, if you're a cinephile, if you love outsider art, if you're Gen X, um, but even if you're not some of those things, I think you have to be a cinephile though to appreciate it. Um, or maybe you'll become a cinephile by seeing Ben's essay. Um, Gummo, I actually wrote about kind of. A small press called Pink Plastic House has a prose and poetry compilation called The Book of Corinthians. And I have an essay in there called Devil Worshipping Son of a Bitch, and it's very much inspired by Gummo. Definitely track that down. I was saying to a friend, you know, I think Ghost World is in many ways a counterpart to Gummo. While everybody in the small town in Gummo is a weirdo, and there are those kind of weirdos as well in Ghost World, the town in Ghost World is more or less an average suburb, and Enid is the outsider. She's the weirdo. We focus a lot on her interest in counterculture and kind of found vintage culture. That's how she ends up bonding with Steve Buscemi's character. And while Ghost World is more from a feminine perspective, and also has themes about having to grow up, evolving beyond your current friends. I think it also has a little bit of that theme that Ben made explicit in his essay about Gummo as far as life itself being beautiful, even in the midst of weirdos in a small town. So check those out. Uh, right now, though, let's talk about three movies I have seen recently. Last Night at Terrace Lanes, Here for Blood, and hellhole. So starting off with Last Night at Terrace Lanes, this is about a bowling alley in a small town closing on its final night, and a cult shows up to kill everybody. The bowling alley owner is there, so is his daughter who is there with a friend, a girl who might be her date. To you, it might be obvious and clear cut. I am merely a heterosexual man, so to me it was kind of vague. I'll let you decide. This was directed by Jamie Nash, who has a story writing credit on something I enjoy very much, the WNUF Halloween special. Nash has also been a producer on stuff that you've probably liked, like installments of the VHS movies and Satanic Hispanics. Uh, also a producer on the upcoming Ghost Game, which is directed by Jill Six of The Stylus. I'm very excited about that. Also with a writing credit on this movie and 
the upcoming Ghost game is Adam Cesari, very famous for Clown in a Cornfield, which is his book, which will now be an upcoming movie as well. There are some things that this film does right. It's got some funny moments. They really make great use of the location. The premise itself is interesting, and there are some very shocking kills storyline-wise. Um, pretty early on, you get to know some folks who you think are going to be with you for the whole journey, and they are most certainly not. Now, some of the cult stuff, I'll be honest, was confusing to me. Might not have worked for me totally, but the basic premise of these folks stuck in this bowling alley and being hunted, very creepy, compelling stuff. Definitely a easy, breezy, brief to be watch that you can sit back and enjoy with friends or loved ones or bowling team partners. And hey, Mary Beth McAndrews is an executive producer on here. I like Mary Beth McAndrews, so... For Mary Beth, and for the spirit of bowling, for the spirit of Terrace Lanes, check it out. Sean Roberts is not a professional wrestler, but he does a pretty good job acting like one in Here for Blood. Uh, Roberts was on Degrassi The Next Generation, a bunch of the Resident Evil movies, and so many other credits we don't have time to go through them all. Director Daniel Torres and writer James Roberts don't really have that many other credits. Actually, James Roberts, the writer, this is his only writing credit I found. You might recognize some of the actors from some things, but really the most notable person is D. Snyder, who only has a voice acting credit in this. I won't give away what or who. You'll just have to watch. And if you don't know him from D. Snyder's Strange Land, one of the most twisted movies I've ever seen, then you should know him as uh, Twisted Sisters lead singer. I didn't mean to make that twisted pun earlier, but I'm going to leave that in. I'm not editing this out. Anyway, so you should know right off the bat, the most unbelievable part of this movie for me aren't the cultists or the undead. It's that uh, some family would let uh, their babysitter's boyfriend take her place uh, babysitting that night because she's got to go steady. But, um, you know, this dude seems like a pretty trustworthy guy. And I'll tell you right away, like, the pro wrestling stuff doesn't really make that much of a difference to the plot. It just explains why he's such a good fighter. But really, it's about uh, basically kind of a home alone scenario. But instead of the wet bandits, it's uh, an undead cult. This is very fun, over-the-top stuff. Uh, think, like, Kids vs. Aliens or Psycho Gorman. It's definitely on that level of zaniness. If you know the film Satanic Panic, which was written by uh, Grady Hendrix, the, the famous horror author and um, friend of the show, Ted Gagan. Definitely some satanic panic vibes. Nice little plot twist you may or may not see coming, but definitely worth the journey and um, a lot of great kills, a lot of gory stuff. Definitely a fun one. Definitely a must watch. Speaking of must watch, finally we have Hell Hole by John Adams and Toby Poser, aka the Adams family. You usually get to see their daughters Lulu and Zelda involved in this stuff. Lulu wrote with Toby and John on this, but um, no Zelda this time around. You do have John and Toby front and center in this alien slash the thing kind of sci-fi horror and it's great so this was shot in serbia it takes place on a serbian fracking site um, definitely a bigger scale than we're used to from the diy adams family filmmakers although where the devil roams you know that was something they took out on the road uh, it, the story at least you know the traveling uh, carnival folk um, but this is a different kind of movie those have more um, kind of poignant themes Hellbender did as well as far as mother-daughter goes. This is just a straight-up, like, gore-fest, creatures. Um, you know, there's some environmental undertones, but um, that's really not what this is all about. This is really about, hey, there's a creature that we have unearthed, and we are stuck on this work site, and uh, what are we going to do about it? Look, you know John Adams, you know Toby Poser, then you know they know how to make a great movie. They know how to make a fun movie. They have fun stories, and uh, this is a different type of story, like I said, for them than I'm used to, but uh, they know how to do it right, and they know how to do it in their flavor, their style. They've got the John Adams doing the music, the, the rock and roll soundtrack, uh, you know, the great guitars and whatnot, um, and you've got the snappy dialogue. You've got a bunch of unlikable people, uh, including John in this movie. He's not the 
greatest guy you're rooting for, but um, you really do come to love uh, Toby and uh, her nephew in this, plus his new Serbian scientist friend. Um, I, I thought everybody really did great in their roles, and um, the only thing is the ending is abrupt and ambiguous, so I was expecting a little bit more of an epilogue, but nope credits roll and I'm left wondering what the hell just happened um and I'm going to be thinking about that for a while I, I have my theories a lot of critics and, and viewers have um but I'll leave that to you to find out just go enjoy this gore fest go enjoy this octopus burrowing in your butt <laughs> watch your hole hell hole that's all I got for now until next time I'll see you on the other side I remain hub.